Well, hey, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, I apologize for having some notes here, but I don't want to miss anything. Uh, but at the same time, I want this video to be really unscripted. I'm almost like a vlog. Uh, because what we're going to be talking about today is mentorship and the importance of it, especially when used in conjunction with a system that's been proven to generate results and help you scale a business. And I recognize that there are going to be some people who watch this video and question my authenticity. And, and I get that because at first glance, it can seem a bit self-serving. But um, what I want to try and do in this video is explain why what we do is so effective and why what you may have tried in the past really has not been. Because I know full well that this is not your first rodeo. Right? You've bought courses in the past. You've probably paid for some coaching or mentorship from some silver-tongued marketer who has regaled you with stories of transformation and the promise of some million-dollar future. But for whatever reason, when you've tried to put that into action, it hasn't worked out as well for you. And so I'm, I'm not going to spend any time today like showing you snapshots of Stripe accounts or, or, or stories and testimonials from other people. But what I really want to do is, if you'll give me a minute, is explain some stories. I tell you some stories from my own life uh, that taught me not just the value of having systems and mentors in, in your business, uh, but also it, the, some of the stuff that really formed the foundation of the Business Growth Accelerator. And so I think that maybe the best place to start is just to talk a little bit about the coaching industry in general, uh, because I, I think that the industry is fundamentally broken, and I have felt this way for a long time. I've been in this business for now 12 years, been in a long time, and I've seen the evolution uh, of where we've been and where we've come to, especially as it relates to business and marketing coaching. And... One of the problems with the industry today is that most people who say they're selling coaching are really just selling courses. And, and there's no problem with selling courses unless you're advertising and promoting that you're actually providing some coaching and mentorship. Uh, and, and unfortunately, for most people selling coaching today, their idea of coaching is selling you a course and then putting you into a Facebook group where some ad admin at their company answers your questions or they just rely on the community to do it. Or maybe if you're really lucky, one day a week or one day a month, you come together and the, the mentor teaches from some sort of canned program that they developed and that they've probably given a thousand times before. Now, now I don't know what that is, but that's not mentorship. And maybe the best way to think about this, this will really help wrap your head around this, is when you think mentorship or coaching, I want you to replace that word with guide because that's really what a mentor does. If you think about guide, when you hire a guide for something, it's not the guy just doesn't just pull out the map and say, okay, yep, here's where you're starting and here's where you're going and this is the best path to take and then say, see you later. They say, no, they break the map out. They say, here's how, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to go here and then here and then here. And then he says, okay, let's go. And then you go together and you hired them because they've already been on the path. They know where all the obstacles are. They're, they know, hey, this might look like a shortcut, but it's fraught with danger. We don't want to go down that path. We want to do it this way. It's going to be a little bit more difficult, but the odds on us actually getting the result, getting you to the destination increase exponentially if we do that. See, that's what a good guide does. And that's what good mentorship is. Mentorship is a partnership between you and the mentor, that there is a responsibility there in seeing not only that you understand the path, but that you're getting help all the way to the destination. And that's just not what coaching has become today. Most of the programs that you see aren't results driven because they can't really deliver on getting results for customers. And that's not all their fault. Right? Let's make that clear. It's really difficult to get results for somebody when they only finish a third of the program that they purchase from you. Uh, and, and that's what you see happen. In fact, by the, by the industry's own standards, only about 13% of people who start a program will end up finishing it. And that's like one in 10 so it's not shocking to understand, to believe that, hey, they're not, they're having a tough time getting results. But I think the biggest culprit and the, the greatest amount of responsibility should rest at the feet of the marketers masquerading as coaches or, or mentors 
who create these six-week, eight-week, 10-week, 12-week programs with hundreds of hours of video and worksheets and all kinds of stuff, stuff like even, even tests, which is baffling to me why you would have tests. But, uh, and then what they do is, is they say, hey, look at all this stuff that you're getting. You get the Facebook group and you get all these worksheets and you get a thousand hours of training. And that's why you should be willing to pay $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 for this thing. But you see, we shouldn't be measuring the value shouldn't be in the amount of stuff that you get. It should be in the result that's generated. And unfortunately, that's not what's happening because of that most of the coaches that you're seeing are coming into the industry and they're primarily concerned about themselves rather than the client because they know that it's very difficult to get results and, and results don't come, don't come easy for most of them. They focus instead on maximizing the number of people that they can put through the program rather than trying to maximize the results that they can generate for the client. And that's why if you look at our program, You'll notice that kind of the on-demand training, the actual, the training portion of it is the smallest piece. And we did that for a very specific reason. And to illustrate why, I want to tell you a story about uh, a guy that I met a few years ago named Leo Hamill. Uh, Leo has become a very dear friend of mine, and, uh, and I respect the hell out of him as not just an entrepreneur, but as a business, uh, not just as an entrepreneur, a business person, but as a human being. He's been very kind to me. And, and I first was introduced to him in 2015. And at the time I was running my, my uh, financial education company. And I also had started this little podcast where we were talking about politics and economics. And um, the way we were funding that show was through donations. And, and so at the end of every single show, I'd say something like, hey, if you like the show, you wanna send us a few bucks, that'd be great. And then I had a little place where you could donate $5, $10, whatever. And then one day, I go down to pick up the mail and there is an envelope in there from a guy named Leo Hamill from San Diego. And I opened it up and there's a little letter along with a thousand dollar check. And the letter was real simple. He said, Hey man, I don't know you, but I've been listening to your podcast and I absolutely love it. And I want you to keep going with it. So here's a thousand bucks. And over the course of the next few months, he would just randomly send me a thousand dollars for no reason. He heard a show, liked the show, sent me a thousand dollars. And so when I went to San Diego uh, at the end of that year for a big marketing conference, uh, I connected with him and I went down to his office. I went and saw the, his beautiful jewelry store that he has. And I think it, I believe it is the largest jewelry store in San Diego and sat in his little office, little cubbyhole office in the corner. And we were talking about, about business and about, you know, about politics, about everything. But I, I, I mentioned that at that point in the business, we were doing around $3 million a year in revenue, which with the profit margins we had of 65, 70%, we were making really good money. I was living very well. And, uh, and I was talking to him, I said, you know, we're making this money and the company's growing. I got 12 employees, but I feel like I can't even take a break. I wanted to come out here for three days to do this, to be at this marketing event. And I just felt like, man, what's going to break? What's going to be, what's going to be, you know, messed up that I'm going to have to jump out and leave an event, leave the event to come back home for. And he said, man, you got to get a handle on that. He said, I'm not bragging to you, but he said every year I've been open since 1980, every single year we have grown by a minimum of 20% every single year without fail. He said, not only that, that also includes a two year period of time when I didn't even come into the office, I didn't answer an email. I didn't do anything. I literally got burned out and I just left the business. And I said, that's shy. I, I don't know. Like that's beyond my comprehension to even understand. Like, how do you do that? He said two things. He said, the first thing is that every single policy procedure issue that may come up in this business, we have documented and put into our policy manual. He said, because that's there, anytime somebody comes to me and they say, hey, we got this situation, how should we handle this? My first response is, what does the policy manual say? And he said, it takes a little while to train a new employee to stop coming to ask me stuff like that or ask the managers. He said, eventually everybody knows the manual's there for everybody to access and they go and they look and they find out how do I handle this specific situation? And he said, 
if on the rare occasion when we see a situation that hasn't occurred in 40 years of us being in business, then the very first thing I do that day is write a policy on how we're going to handle it. And it goes into the policy manual. So because of that, I don't need to be at the business. Everybody knows every piece of the business. Everybody knows their job. And if there's any question, they go and consult the manual. And he said, the second reason we've been able to generate that kind of growth year over year is because every single week I get a report. And the report doesn't have 50 things on it that we're measuring and we're watching. There aren't a thousand things. We know in our company where the money comes from and what's important. And so I get this very simple sheet, a couple of pages that has a, a, a few key metrics on it that I want to watch. And he said, there are only three options for each one of those metrics. He says, we're either flat from last week, we're up from last week or we're down. So whether it's number of leads in the door, whether it's, uh, you know, total revenue, whatever, you know, when, when the business shifts and we go to buying wholesale gold, how many pounds of that did we bring in? Like we know, I know what to watch for. He said, we put this stuff together and I know instantly where there might be a problem in the business. Cause he said, if we're flat from last week or down, I consider that a problem. He said, if we're not making money every week versus last week, we look at it and we address it. And because of that, we, we don't see problems develop over three months or six months or a year. He said, I can see it instantly. And I call people in and we don't give ourselves excuses on, Hey, we're, Oh, it's seasonal. Like why we didn't, we're not measuring this week over this same week last year. They're like, we look at week to week. And my expectation is that we will be up every week on the key metrics that I'm looking at. And if not, we address it. We get together and say, why is this happening? What do we need to do to make sure that the next week we go into positive territory? And he goes, because of that, we never have issues or very rarely. And I said, I said, I, I was dumbfounded because I said, here I am. I'm running a $3 million business. I got 12 employees. Not only could I not leave, I was struggling to leave for three days. Not only could I not leave for a couple of months, much less two years, but after being in business since, what is it, 2010, this was roughly five years and had 12 employees, $3 million in yearly, in yearly revenue, I didn't have a single policy or how-to manual put together. Not one policy, not one how-to. I was one accident, one, one, uh, one employee deciding that they wanted to leave from wrecking my business. And I said, I, I, I gotta know more. Okay. If this is how it works and this is what needs to be done. I said, please teach me. What is the system? How are you looking at it? He said, I'll do you one better. He called in one of the gals from the office. He said, Hey, go to the policy manual and print off everything having to do with how we measure success each week. And she said, okay. And she went out, she came back, she handed me the section on that photocopy of it. It was about maybe 10 pages that outlined step-by-step step how they measure, what sort of reports they get, how, what they look at. And he said, here, here it is. He said, just do this. And I went back to my business and started implementing. And the relief, the total relief in, in just my ability to now be able to predict what's going to happen in the business and, and knowing that, hey, if somebody got hit by a bus, I wasn't going to be scrambling to run the business and run the operation side. And not only do, am I so grateful to him for taking the time to mentor me and teach me what he did, but big chunks of what he taught me are part of the business growth accelerator, a big part of how we measure and the way we do weekly sit reps and how we do our quarterly sprints and planning. Much of that came directly from what he taught me about how to manage a business. And uh, let me tell you one more story. I'm, uh, stories are fun, right? But this is another one to illustrate really the power of systems, especially for those of you who really consider yourselves visionaries. Uh, my brother-in-law, his name's David Lefevre, and he's a very famous chef in Southern California. He owns several restaurants there. Uh, and you may recognize him if you watch those cooking shows, because years ago he was on like Iron Chef or one of those, one of those shows. And he ended up finishing second. And when he got back, he opened up his first restaurant from called the Arthur J. And since then he's opened up, I think three or four other ones. He owns Fishing with Dynamite, which is in my opinion, the very best sushi restaurant in Los Angeles. He owns uh, a, a restaurant called MB Post, 
which is kind of like American cuisine. It's absolutely delicious. And then he also owns a new restaurant that they just opened up called Ryla, which is an Asian fusion restaurant. And as they were doing the design and kind of the final build out for that restaurant, and we were chatting last year, I said, I said, hey man, do you get nervous? You know, there's lots of expenses. You lay, you do a lot of layout, a lot of big investment to get a, a restaurant off the ground. And I said, I mean, restaurants are, they're a very unpredictable business. Lots of restaurants start and then they fail. There's people don't like the food or the food's good, but not enough to draw people in. And he said, I'll never forget it. I was shocked by his response. He said, you know, we really don't. He said, after I got done with the, the show and we were going to open up the first restaurant, a guy came to me and he said, he said, hey, I'd like to open a restaurant with you. He said, I can see your vision. I, I love what you're doing. And he said, I already have a system for opening restaurants. We've opened about 40 restaurants across the nation. And he said, I'd like to, I'd like to partner with you to start a restaurant. And he said, because we have a system in place, we don't really worry about whether or not the business is going to be successful. The restaurant will be. Because he said, we already know good food. Like, I know what good food is. And he said, finding, like, finding someone who can create really great food is not a difficult thing to do. There are lots of really great restaurateurs out there, or a lot of really great uh, chefs out there. But there aren't a lot of really great restaurateurs that have a system for developing it. And so when you combine a knowledge of good food with a system for developing and launching restaurants, he said, we don't really stress about that anymore. We know our numbers. We have a system for the build out and how much that should cost and how we model that. We have a system for how we hire and how we train the staff. We have a system for how the kitchen is run, for how the orders come in, for how food deliveries happen. We have a system for everything in the business. And so because of that, he doesn't spend a lot of time in the restaurant being a chef anymore. He spends a lot of time managing his growing empire of restaurants. His job is being a business owner. His job is running the business. And it works because he has systems in place. And so if I wasn't convinced before that, that systems were important and that it was really critical that you combine that system with some good mentorship, which is exactly what I had with Leo and what David has with his partner, um, I, I was certainly convinced after that conversation. But here's the big problem with systems. And I learned this way back when I was trading currencies years and years ago. Uh, and this is important, so listen to me. The very best system in the world is useless in the hands of someone who won't follow it. And, and what I found was when I started teaching my system, because trading when done well, even investing when done well, is very boring. You have a system. You have a system that you followed that you know historically has produced a profit for you. And then you come in every single day and you just trade the system. You just follow the rules. Well, what I found was when I started teaching my system to traders, one that I knew was very effective, is that when we were all in a room together, and we were all trading and I was showing them and saying, okay, we're going to enter here. We're going to tip our stops here. We're going to put our targets here. Everybody tended to do pretty good with the follow along method. But if they left that group too soon, if they left those live trading environments before they had fully mastered the system, then when they went out on their own, they started to fall back into old habits. They started to have all of the, all the problems that you see most traders and investors have, an inability to be consistent, uh, big losses followed by small gains, all of that stuff. And it was a result of someone knowing what to do, or at least knowing what the system was, but having a lot of trouble implementing. And that's why I think coaching, at least as it's being sold today, is largely a joke. Because you have the coach who's fundamentally focused on themselves rather than the client. And so they're, they're creating programs designed to maximize the number of people that they can put into them rather than focusing on being a partner in helping the customer, helping the client get the results that they're after. And that is what makes what we do so very different. Now, see, I'm not claiming that I have the best system in the world. Like, there are lots of good systems that are out there that, if followed and done correctly, will produce you great results. I'm also not claiming to be the very best mentor and coach on the planet or in the industry. What I am saying, with absolute certainty, is that what we have designed 
is built with you in mind. And that we consider ourselves, I consider myself a partner in your success. I don't just want to open up the map and show you how to get from point A to point B. I want to be with you every step of the way. Not only do I find that the most interesting and exciting part of what I do, but that's also what's going to help you get the results that you want. See, that's, that's what real mentorship is. Not, not this co-opted thing that you see being peddled online by every Tom, Dick, and Harry. And as near as I can tell, all of us want really three things. We really would like more money, more income. Right? Everybody, everybody has a desire for that kind of increase. We want more freedom. So the money without the freedom really, that's not, that's not all that appealing. It's not all that appealing to run a $3 million company or a $10 million company and have all this money, but you don't have any time to relax. You can't ever shut it off. You, you can't ever get away. So you can't ever enjoy the fruits of your life and of your labor. Uh, it, that's, that's not what we want. And last but not least is we all want to have, hopefully, a little more impact on the world. I think anybody who believes in entrepreneurship is, is about service, which is what I believe has to want to have a greater impact on the world. Because we want to help people. We want to solve problems. We, we want to be a support to other people. That's, that's why we do, at least that's why I do what I do. And so your business should be providing you all three of those things. More income, more freedom, and a, a larger impact on the world. And if it is not, then I would be absolutely honored to work with you to develop and build a system that does. So as you know, on November 15th, we're gonna be opening up enrollment for the Business Growth Accelerator. And I had originally gonna, I was originally gonna wait until January, but uh, I, there's some stuff that I wanna do with you before January 1st, so that you are ready to literally like turn it on January 1. And so we're going to do a limited enrollment for the program between November 15th and December 15th. and. Um, I know that you're gonna have a lot of questions and I wanna make sure that those questions get answered. And I thought about how I wanted to do this. There are different ways. And I decided we're just gonna have a, a little live event on November 15th at 6 p.m. That's 6 p.m. Pacific time. So that's 6 p.m., uh, 7, 8, 9 p.m. Eastern. And that should encompass pretty much anybody who wants to attend to be able to show up. And, and I'll do a quick run through of everything that's part of the program and what you're getting and when we're starting and kind of what's gonna happen. And then uh, those of you who are ready to join can go ahead and enroll then. And, and I know there's a tendency to be like, oh, I'll just watch the replay. And yeah, we'll have replays, I don't care. Um, but I would highly suggest that you make plans to attend live uh, for the thing on the 15th because um, I'm going to, we've got some special pricing in there and I also have some, some extras, some little bonuses that I want to give away to you. And there's a specific reason why we're doing it the way we're doing it. Uh, and I don't want anybody getting the impression that uh, this is some sort of like scarcity tactic to get you to buy now. Um, that, there is that, that is an added benefit in some cases, but that's not why we're doing it. And I want to lay out exactly what's happening and why, because we have very specific reasons for doing everything that we do. Uh, and then finally, I, I, whatever you decide to do, I just want to say thank you. I want to thank you for giving me your time and your attention. Those are, those are two things that are always in scarce supply. The fact that you have watched this video, which I know is a little long, and you're still here, I just want you to know how deeply appreciative I am. Um, other than the birth of my children, the greatest joy in my life has been working with people like you to help create change, positive change in their lives. And seeing that happen and knowing that I got to play a small part in that. I. I I absolutely love what I do, and I wish everybody could have that kind of satisfaction with their work. Um, a lot of people don't, but I do, and that's in a big part because of you. So thank you, and I'll see you on the 15th.